Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Joseph Jeraputo, uh, the publisher and editorial director of Global Finance, coming to you from New York. I'm joined by Basil Gamal, the CEO of Qatar Islamic Bank in Doha. Global Finance recently honored QIB for outstanding crisis leadership. This recognition went to a select few organizations around the world that went above and beyond in protecting and supporting their customers, staff, and society at large during the COVID-19 pandemic. Basil, welcome. Thank you for having me and thank you for the honor that you actually have given to myself and my team and, uh, and the bank and, uh, and the support of the board. Well, really it's well, it's well deserved, and I, th I think it's you know one of the most important honors uh, you know we have uh, participated in. Now, tell me, how has the pandemic affected Qatar's economy? Well, like any other country, economies have uh, have been uh, affected by the pandemic. But I would say that Qatar has been in a better place compared to many other countries in in the region and across uh, the globe. As the fact that the government has taken very, uh, I would say, serious measures early uh, in the pandemic when it started, has definitely reduced the risk of uh, the pandemic being spread out and to ensure also that the economy is uh, operating, I wouldn't say at 100% capacity, but at least it is operating at decent uh, levels of, uh, of, uh, of growth and uh, activity. Uh, what we have seen in, uh, in the early days of the pandemic being uh, yani, uh, a major headline uh, everywhere, that uh, the government has put the safety of the people as an absolute priority, which is uh, a fact, and we have followed uh, suit in, in, in that, in addition to supporting businesses in terms of financial packages and helping the SME sector in general and being the most affected sector in, in, in the economy and making sure that uh, the trade and uh, activity is, is ongoing and uh, unaffected. Uh, in terms of, of growth, as you know that Qatar is committed to uh, certain uh, infrastructure projects for uh, the FIFA 2022 World Cup and that has been ongoing, it hasn't stopped or being delayed. I think even uh, the head of FIFA has, uh, has yani, been recently uh, mentioning that it, the progress is, uh, is beyond the expectations. And we've also uh, know that the Qatar uh, national vision for 2030 is the buildup of infrastructure in different uh, sectors across uh, the economy and across uh, as a country, but that's also uh, ongoing. Yes, there has been slowdown as a result of a slowdown in, in, in the logistical part of, of, of things, but overall we have seen the economy uh, working and the activity, although has been at a slower pace, it hasn't had a major impact on, on the economy. Uh, if you want to discuss also the banking uh, sector, and I've seen for the first three quarters of, uh, of 2020, we've seen the financial results of most of, of, of the banks here, and the banks have, uh, I would say, done well in uh, such an environment. Uh, most of the banks have maintained their uh, levels of, of, of profitability compared to, to last year, while taking uh, a prudent approach uh, in provisioning and in terms of, uh, of being conservative related to the impact uh, on the financial sector and uh, the clients uh, in terms of impairment and, and provisioning uh, levels. But I think we're in a good place, especially with the liquidity uh, being uh, released into the financial sector and into the economy. I think we're in a good place uh, compared to, to, to others. What about the, the impact of the pandemic on QIB and on your retail and corporate strategy? The impact was, I wouldn't say positive, it is positive in, in one thing in my mind actually that it has uh, encouraged or it, it wasn't an encouragement, it was it has forced clients to tap into our digital capabilities. And I've been investing in, in, in digital transformation program for quite some time 
I think we started that almost four or five years ago, and uh, it was a matter of convincing a part of our clients that are not technologically savvy or they would like to still deal in, in physical kind of approach to, to, to the banks and the, the branches to use our digital uh, platforms. So we've seen a major shift from uh, a physical approach towards a, a virtual uh, approach. Uh, in terms of our, I'll, I'll give you an example. At the start of the pandemic, we were working 15% of the population of the bank were working from office, while 85% were working uh, from home. That wouldn't have been possible without uh, being able to give all the services on digital uh, platforms. So that definitely has helped. And as, a, as I mentioned, the safety of our staff was an absolute priority. The safety of the staff and our customers and the society in, and the community in general was definitely the first priority for, uh, for, uh, for the bank here. The second part was our social responsibility as well. And uh, now we have been uh, co cooperating with the Ministry of, of Health for increasing the awareness about the pandemic to make sure that the population is, is, uh, is well aware and taking the, the safety measures that they should uh, take. The third part was providing support to our clients. You know, they always say that banks uh, are like uh, an umbrella. You, you miss it when you need it. So we made sure that we provide support to our clients, both corporates, SMEs and, uh, and retail. And that we didn't do alone. And there was support from uh, from uh, the government. Many initiatives were uh, were, were done, uh, including deferrals of payments for the SME to make sure that uh, they are uh, in a good place. I wouldn't say in a perfect place, but they are in a good uh, place. Uh, making sure that the liquidity to the sectors that were affected were uh, channeled to, to those sectors to make sure that the liquidity is, 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 is being uh, there for the requirements. And also for uh, the retail, we have seen uh, some, for example, that have been traveling and they were stuck uh, outside the, the country. The deferrals were, were made for, uh, for those. In, in general, we see that uh, with the liquidity that was, and most of the banks here, not just QIB, they have a decent level of liquidity. We have strong <coughs> capital adequacy ratios and strong capital base, but definitely that has helped us to, I would say, weather through uh, the storm, especially in the first few months of, of the pandemic, where the major or the key impact uh, was there. For uh, our first nine months of, of, of the year, the three first three quarters, uh, we have maintained the level of profitability that we have generated last year, even though we've increased our impairment provision conservatively uh, by almost 85%. That actually is uh, it's, uh, something that we are uh, we're happy with. And we were happy with the conservative approach that we have used over the past many years that definitely helped us uh, through this uh, process. And for, for banking, um, how will it impact banking? The good thing, as I mentioned, yani, yani, obviously the pandemic is not definitely a good thing. This is the good thing that people started to get used to the idea that they can do banking virtually. They can do it over their mobile, uh, on the internet banking, uh, on the different uh, e-channels, call centers, and, and so forth. And we have seen a major shift. And we've been trying to increase the penetration rates towards our uh, digital uh, services for some time. We have seen that happen in the past uh, six or seven months, since uh, actually nine months now, since this started. We've seen like two folds increase in, 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 in registration and usage of our uh, digital uh, platforms. And I think this is going to continue going, uh, going forward. Uh, banks are not going to be dependent 
anymore on, on the widespread branches, but rather making accessibility to, to, to banks on, on, on digital platforms much, uh, much easier and uh, user friendly. As a matter of fact, we have already uh, downsized our, uh, our branch network uh, since, uh, since that started by almost 20 plus percent. Uh, and we haven't seen any drop in uh, the number of or volumes of, of transactions uh, across the board, whether it's for corporate or for, uh, for retail personal banking, we haven't seen any drop. As a matter of fact, we've, we've seen an increase in the number of, of transactions being uh, shifting or, or, or processed on, on the mobile and, and internet banking. And this becoming a street through processes as well. But it is more efficient, it is more, it's easier for the clients, it's uh, less costly for, for the clients. And I think the clients are actually realizing uh, that and uh, this is uh, going to be the way forward yeah. I mean, banks do realize that this is the future so you, you could you could anticipate uh, an increase in efficiency a lower cost structure uh, and greater customer satisfaction coming out of this i totally agree but so with that comes as uh, a higher investment that you have to to do in your digital uh, platforms mm -hmm. like Digital, you you have to keep spending and investing all the time, and technology is evolving uh, all the time. Basil, thank you very much. All right, thank you. So thank you for pleasure. joining us and giving us the time. Thank you for having me, and thank you for uh, the honor and the privilege that you've uh, given to, to the bank. I would like also to, to thank all my colleagues and the support I've got from my board uh, for the approach that, uh, that we have done uh, during this pandemic. Mm -hmm.